It's early morning in the Nakuru National Park in Kenya, and a team of gamekeepers and biologists has tranquilized a rhinoceros. They have 10 minutes until the animal wakes up again. In the meantime, the rhino's enormous body has to be kept cooled with water. They take its measurements and a blood sample, and also remove a tiny piece of one ear. We have a tissue, we have a blood, and then we also have the hair samples from the tank. Okay, to the car. So we need to go back with the car. The samples are sent to a laboratory in the capital, Nairobi. There, researchers analyze the animal's DNA and record the results in a special database for rhinos and elephants. So we get uh, a variety of samples like ivory. This kind of ivory that uh, we cut them from the base of the, of the horn. These guys usually handle ivory and you can see this, these are already processed. They have been cut into chips. You can see it's very hard for you to know that this is ivory. When poachers are caught with a piece of ivory or rhino horn, the researchers can then use the computer records to determine which animal it was taken from. The team in Kenya cooperate closely with their counterparts in South Africa, who first developed the database. Yesterday we received seven hounds here from uh, a guy who was arrested here in Kenya from Mozambique. So those samples you are going to take to link, get their profiles and then link them with our database. It's the only way the team can prove that the horn in question has been illegally acquired. But high demand and soaring prices on the black market mean that poaching continues to grow. Most of the horns end up in Asia. That's where genetic engineer George Bonacci and his partner Matthew Marcus come in. In their laboratory in San Francisco on the west coast of the U.S., they're manufacturing artificial rhino horn. The aim is to flood the market with their cut price version. Black market price right now, uh, there's ranges from $30,000 uh, per kilogram to up to $100,000 per kilogram. Um, we're sort of targeting a $7,000 per kilogram figure, um, and we think that that is going to be a, a good price point that will put a lot of pressure on the poachers and the poaching syndicates because it will be harder for them to make money, to bribe officials, and to do other things. The artificial horn largely consists of rhino keratin made with biotechnological methods. The bioengineers also add rhino DNA. With the help of a 3D printer, the resulting powder is then transformed into a full-size solid horn. Because of the manufacturing process, the result doesn't just look like a rhino horn. The researchers say it's genetically identical. They show us a prototype. We're going to be looking at shark fin, which is obviously very popular in China, uh, pangolin scales, which are also made of keratin, tiger bone, which is also used in traditional Chinese medicine, um, ivory, which obviously has a lot of history in the West for use in durable good products. So um, all kinds of, of anything where an animal is used in a tradition, um, we want to be able to remove that animal from the goods chain. Opinion is divided on whether the artificial horn will actually put poachers out of business. But with the rhino population in Kenya now down to just a thousand animals, they need all the help they can get. 